I'm going to start with some slides, just to get you into a mood of the presentation. No. And then uh, a little demo. So um, I joined uh, PTC in October, and we started something that we call a reality lab, because we really think there's, there's so much out there that's called reality by now, like virtual, augmented, mixed, on forever. But they all have, have one simple core. They all really try to give you a better uh, connection to the machines, to give you a better understanding of what you can do with these machines. So we really want to explore that in the, in the reality lab. And um, I want to show you, um, I want to show you this demo later. Um, something that uh, I worked on even before I joined uh, PTC is something uh, this is called the reality editor. We, we explored it here in the media lab, and now we're we're going to show you the, the next level of that development. So, um, with the reality editor, there are things like you can uh, understand better um, environments when you are shopping and you, you are allergic to certain things. Uh, you can you can immediately show which products have these things uh, like. Like uh, you're allergic for maybe um, wheat, and uh, you want to plant that away, and you just want to show products that you actually can consume. So that's one thing. Uh, we're able to use uh, that tool to operate robots and move them around, uh, log in, and then you can start moving them around and lift things up. And um, we even use that tool to program uh, cars. So. You have a general purpose knobs that you can um, use and program um, the light, uh, the, um, the windows in a car, and you can daisy chain them up, and with one button you can operate all of them. So th these are all pretty nice applications, but uh, in some, some uh, kind, they're a little bit limited in the moment. Uh, we are, we are in a stage where the reality around us is, uh, we always think it's, there's a lot of technology out there, but actually for for where our augmented reality really makes sense, it is not that stage yet. Like to really engage with the physical world around us, maybe there are some more developments in technology that that that's going to happen. Um, but one stage, one place where this is really interesting is uh, the factory floor, because in a factory you have such a high density of technology that all needs to be um, orchestrated and work together and, and have all these little pieces, um, motors and sensors. That um, that really um, that that really drive us to to an ex to a point where it's, uh, you need to be a strong expert to really understand how, how this all works. So um, so this is this is an interesting part of PTC because PTC has so much connection to the factory floor through the technology that is uh, happening within PTC. So um, we became interested in that. So this is a factory floor. In that factory floor, you have a control cabinet where all, all the electronics and the technology comes together. And in this control cabinet, you have a programmable logic controller, short uh, PLC. And the, this is a small high-speed uh, computer that can orchestrate this entire uh, factory. And uh, back to the human connection, somewhere you have a control room in which an operator sits and checks that everything <coughs> Nice in a factory. Um, but short, you have kind of three experts: somebody who is in the factory checking that everything works, somebody who programs the PLC, and somebody who control, sits in the control room and operates the factory. So the experiment that I'm going to show you, oops, um, has to do with this: Is it possible to to uh, these three experts to put them into one? or on one spot and say, I have a tool that allows me to understand, control, program, and operate the factory. And so, that's the demo time. So here we have uh, the reality editor tool. So, and um, I'm just looking at these things. Here is a, here's a little machine, it's kind of a demo machine. It has this PLC, this programmable computer. It has a motor and some little solenoids that put uh, a load on the motor and uh, buttons to operate. And here we have a little box that we put together with all kinds of buttons and uh, different kinds of buttons and um, rotation knobs and so on, just 
as a prototyping environment. And so <coughs> the first thing I can do is when I switch to another mode of this editor, I suddenly have a representation of that machine where every functionality is represented through a node. And when I look at this box, I have the same kind of representation. So for example, here you have the button is connected to the light, and that is the reason why this light can shine. So what I can do, I can go from that push button and draw a connection to, to the motor. And now, um, when I push this button, I have uh, connected the motor and, and that box. The box is separated from this machine, so it's just through the network. Um, so now, th this is a very simple principle. And this principle can be used throughout an entire factory, throughout an entire system. We have programmed cars with it and so on. Um, but now you can do other things. You can, for example, say, so I have this little, this little buttons here. And I want to activate, activate the solenoids and put pressure on this motor uh, one after another. So I can maybe start a, some kind of a test. And so for that, to just not just connect A to B, we have these little nodes. We call them logic nodes. You can just drag and drop one of these logic nodes into that space. So when I, when I click on this logic node, I have already a little program in here. And that program, I, I cut it short, so otherwise I need to explain that. But th what this program does is it has an input that goes into a threshold. From a threshold, it goes to a delay and then to an output. And then there's a daisy chain of, of delays. So what I can do, um, I wire the motor to the input. It's a blue input. And you see when I click here, it's a blue input. And then I go from the blue output to the first load, the green output to the second load, and the yellow output to the third load. And now, uh, when I push this button here, a little bit delayed comes the first load, the second load, and the third load. And when I release it, delayed, it will stop again. So this is a very small, simple demo. But you can imagine this allows you to orchestrate a whole factory floor on the go. Um, you probably don't want to do it right away, because there's a lot of security and so on, but um, maybe for test scenarios, when you want to figure out how, how to orchestrate a new uh, factory floor, you could use this tool. Um, another thing what you can do is, when you look at this machine, and you have all of these different tests, you put these loads on this little uh, motor, you might want to understand a little bit what's actually happening here at the moment. So you can uh, go into a mode, and you can um, you can look at this screen, and we have we have a couple of um, of widgets. So the first is like a slider, and uh, the second is a two-dimensional slider, and then comes something like a graph. So you can take this graph, drop it on this machine, and um, go into this node mode again. And then the same point where the graph was, there's now an input. And I can take uh, the current from the motor and drop it on that input. And now, I will just make a screenshot from that, oops, from that graph, so I can show you what's going on. Now when I uh, push the button, you will see how the different loads come in, and when I release, the graph comes off. Okay. And with that, I finished that little demo. And uh, I hope you got a little bit, a glimpse of uh, how you can use augmented reality to program the reality around you. And um, we connected the, this tool, the reality editor, to, to these um, PLC units uh, with a software from PTC that's called Capware. And Capware is a universal driver that allows you to connect to pretty much every machine that you can find in the factory. So we can now use that kind of work and experiment with these machines. Thank you.